Alice, talk us through the key aspects of the Hola business model and let's share what has contributed to your success so far. Thank you. Yeah, we really are on a mission to make life better for retailers. We don't um, want people wearing that risk of the traditional wholesale. And so the way that we, I guess, fulfil our mission at the moment is by making retailers instantly relevant to their customer without that risk. So instead of pre-ordering six to 12 months in advance and having to forecast the trends, the economic climate, you know, and after COVID, how could you ever have forecast that? Hello and welcome. I'm Elizabeth Formosa, the founder of Fashion Equipped and devourer of all things fashion, business and mindset. In this podcast, I'm speaking with thought leaders, change makers and entrepreneurs about the business side of fashion and everything in between. Fashion Business Mindset is your front row seat to real stories from designers, brands, entrepreneurs, makers and mentors. We'll discuss how to launch and grow a fashion business and give you insider access to the future of fashion. So let's do this together and ensure that you're equipped to make the fashion business your business. Welcome back to Fashion Business Mindset. Before I dive into introducing my guest today, I just wanted to share a couple of opportunities with you. Now, if you didn't have the chance to join my seminar recently on the Conscious Fashion Blueprint, then I have good news. This is now available on our website for immediate download. So this will include the one-hour video presentation, an 80-plus page PDF presentation, which is the Conscious Fashion Blueprint, You'll discover the steps to crafting a conscious fashion brand. You'll gain access to links of industry reports and links to leading brand impact reports. The topics that I covered included what is conscious fashion, the power of conscious fashion, building a purpose-led brand, crafting a conscious brand strategy, conscious design and development, responsible sourcing strategies and then I'd leave you with some clear action steps so that you can implement your own conscious fashion blueprint. Now there are also some bonus topics around re-commerce, positive impact and social responsibility and balancing commerciality and profitability. This is a great resource to share with your team if you're an established business or equally valuable if you're working solo. The second opportunity I'd like to mention is about consulting. I'm just about to close my bookings for one-on-one consulting for 2023. So if you're an established business and have been thinking about reaching out for consulting, well, now is the time if you'd like to dive in from October onwards. Now, my guest today is Alice Fitch, the founder of Holla. Alice is a dynamic entrepreneur with a successful history running fashion wholesale businesses. Her company, Holla, is transforming the way business is done in this legacy industry, leveraging the latest technologies and automation. The Holla platform is a one-stop wholesale shop that has been embraced by 5,000 retailers around Australia and internationally who use it to do their fashion buying. Alice's mission is to make life better for retailers by making their stores instantly relevant to their target markets without the risk of traditional fashion buying. Alice has worked in the fashion wholesale space for over a decade, launching and growing many well-known Australian brands prior to launching Holla. Alice's skill set focuses on innovation, wholesale strategy and communications. This was a dynamic discussion about the wholesale landscape and how you can optimise your wholesale strategy. So uh, let's dive in. Alice, welcome to the Fashion Business Mindset podcast. Thanks for having me, Elizabeth. Very excited to be here. I can't wait to dive into all things holla today. But before we do, I'd love to hear about your journey in the industry before you became the founder of holla. 
Um, Elizabeth, I actually fell into fashion. My background is advertising and marketing, and I had a marketing consultancy that suddenly generated a whole lot of fashion clients, and they were loving the services that we were giving them, but they couldn't secure enough retail stores for their brands. So we were like, we can work out how to do that. And eventually we morphed into a fashion agency. So I ran a business called Alice in La La for over a decade in Adelaide and in Sydney, And through that process, that traditional wholesale process, I was frustrated for our clients, for our brands. It was inefficient. It was not customer focused and it was a really expensive way to do business. And through that process, I also saw lots and lots of stores going bankrupt, doing business in the traditional wholesale way. And that kind of left me angry, which was a motivator for me. So I sold one of the businesses, which gave me a bit of time and headspace to think about how to do it better. And I was painting my house one night and came up with the concept for Holler so that retailers could buy all of their brands in one place without the risk of traditional wholesale. And that's really how it kind of came to life. I I love it. Well, we've got some synergy here with the consulting. (laughs) I know with consulting, there's lots of twists and turns and you never know where that's going to take you. But the moving meditation, painting the house, I'm sure that's where the big (laughs) ideas come in. It really does. I I still try to do it. At least once a year, I try and paint something. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So we're so glad that you did have that moment in time. So let's dive into Holla. It's such a fascinating, innovative business model, and you believe in making life better for retailers and for brands. So Alice, talk us through the key aspects of the Holla business model, and let's share what has contributed to your success so far. Thank you. Yeah, we really are on a mission to make life better for retailers. We don't um, want people wearing that risk of the traditional wholesale. And so the way that we, I guess, fulfill our mission at the moment is by making retailers instantly relevant to their customer without that risk. So instead of pre-ordering six to 12 months in advance and having to forecast the trends, the economic climate, you know, and after COVID, how could you ever have forecast that? Um, So instead, we are giving buyers the opportunity to buy little and often so that they can be really responsive to their customers' needs. So that's how we're delivering on a mission at the moment, but there are a whole lot of things in the pipeline that will actually help optimise retailers' businesses um, to make their buying more efficient, um, still very joyful and exciting because we don't want to kill that. That's the best bit of buying. <laughs> mm. But it really has been a game changer for retailers to be able to shift their business model to something that is so much more responsive and profitable for them and just so much less stressful. Yeah. Um, So we essentially bring 120 brands into one place and I can talk later a little bit about how we select those brands. Um, But it means that retailers can really source the best styles for their store. They can compare them in their own time and make their best buying decisions without the traditional pressure that is wholesale. Um, You know, in the traditional sense, you would have gone into multiple showrooms. You're looking for a white dress. You pick up on the first one you found three doors down, you may find one that's even better, but you can't go back and return that first one. So we give them the time and space to make those really good buying decisions to really optimise the the styles that they're holding in store. And we are all sorts of other things, like we offer 30-day payments so that retailers can smooth their cash flow so they can actually become cash flow positive. And we subsidise their shipping costs so that they make more margin when they buy with Holler than through any other wholesale channel. Amazing. How many retailers are participating in the Holler platform at the moment? So right now we have about two and a half thousand retailers actively purchasing with us. Um, Most of those are in Australia, but we do have quite a lot of overseas stores as well buying with us. So New Zealand, America, Arab Emirates, all over the world. Yeah, no doubt during COVID, this would have been, you know, the golden nugget, the jewel in the crown, essentially, (laughs) to try and continue some sort of business as usual. Um, You know, the clients that we work with, which is from brands to retailers to wholesale models to e-commerce, it's it's pretty diverse. But Mm. those who were not online were, you know, obviously scrambling to get online quite swiftly during that time. So being a tech business, Alice, I'm sure that um, you would have been looking at, oh my gosh, I'm actually well poised for this period of time. So tell us about those brands that you're attracting. So 120 brands at the moment, Mm. how are you attracting those and what categories are you focusing on on the platform at the moment? 
Sure. So how we attract them, um, it's, we make it as simple as possible. So they can fill in a form on our website. Um, most of them are referred to us by other brands who are already selling with Holla, um, which is a, our strongest source of, um, I guess, leads for, for brands. And we are quite selective. So that doesn't mean it has to be a luxury brand. Most of our brands retail under $150. But what we do is a really detailed product market fit analysis. So we look at um, the styling. Is it what our customers are wanting? Fits, you know, does it fit the average customer? The price points, the margins. There's a whole lot of things that go into, I guess, a matrix where we actually plot the brand. And, And we also look to ensure that our brands don't cannibalize each other either. We're very different to most um wholesale platforms in that we don't want 80,000 brands. We want really selected brands that we know are going to sell through for our customers. And that's the strategy that has led us, I guess, to the early success that we've had. Um, so 85% of our brands are fashion. Mm-hmm. It's our bread and butter. It's where we perform really well. It's what our customers want from us. And then we have about 15% of our category that we play with. So that can be things like beauty brands or um, non-alcoholic drinks, things that can be a great add-on in lifestyle and fashion retail stores. Love it. Love it. Let's break down the journey, I think, for the brand. brand. It would be great to kind of break that down and take everyone through step by step how they could actually be stocked on Holla, because no doubt there'll be many brands tuning in right now. So when they send their email, they fill out their form mm-hmm. and that lands in your inbox. What's the process from there? So the process is our brands team will review their application and there isn't a huge amount of space for them to put special comments in. Um, To be honest, they just need to provide us with their online presence. They can provide a lookbook and things if they want to. Um, So then our brand team reviews that. They plot out that product market fit that I spoke about. And then brands that go into, I guess, the shortlist then get forwarded to me to give the final review on with the recommendations from the brand team. Um, And then we'll do that kind of final analysis. And then we'll actually speak with the brand because we have operational requirements you know they need to carry stock Um, we need to understand what their current distribution looks like so there are some things that we need to sort of dig deeper into the brand to really understand if they're a fit for us Um, and you know that can be things like do they have the cash flow to be able to create their future collections and things like that so we really do kind of dig into the details to make sure that if we're going to launch a brand, that it's a long-term partnership that mm-hmm. we can rely on and build. And again, that's quite different because, you know, we don't want hundreds and hundreds of partners. We just want brands that we know that we can really grow and we give it out absolute all. But we have to be sure that operationally um, we're a fit and that we're a values fit as well. Yeah, absolutely. So just to clarify for the brands that are tuning in, this is an in-stock kind of model. So it's not an indent model. So if they're running a typical wholesale um, mm-hmm. strategy at the moment, this can really work in synergy with what they're already doing. But they would have to plan to be part of a platform like Holler to ensure that, as you said, that they are going to be in stock and be able to service um, the purchases that are placed on the platform. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of traditional brands are becoming very curious about it. That's actually the segment that we get the most inquiries from at the moment is brands who traditionally have indented, but they've identified that their customers, a big portion of them are actually moving away from indent. And in season is not something they do very well at the moment. So we are working with them to make sure that we minimize their risk as well. We don't want them ordering huge amounts of stock. Um, we, We have to actually be quite strategic about how we do that to be able to offer the stock in season without putting the brand at risk as well. So yeah. Yeah, we have um, formulas that we use to ensure ensure that. Yeah. So around that brand marketing side, because I think that, you know, from my experience working with brands every day of the week, there's often a little bit of friction or a little bit of hesitation about getting involved in some of the new online platforms mm-hmm. that are available to us, like Holla, which I see as an amazing opportunity What would you say to those brands or businesses that are thinking, oh, you know, this is maybe not quite for us, you know, that they're they're thinking about all of the things. What are some of the, um, yeah, the pain points that you talk through with brands on, you know, a regular basis? Well, I think you've nailed it. I think, you know, people are afraid to change and especially if it is working okay, but if they don't disrupt themselves and their own business model, someone else will. 
And so being brave enough to kind of put your glasses on and go, what is the future of fashion going to look like in five years' time? You know, are my customers going to be moving away from this traditional model and into a new model? Well, should I be a part of it? And most likely, yes, they should, because there are a very big segment of customers who are no longer buying indent, and that segment is growing. Um, so being a part of it is quite important. But, it, you know, it does take bravery to disrupt yourself. So we talk to them about, you know, how to minimise their risk in making that transition and how important it is because, you know, that otherwise you're not accessing a big portion of the market. Mm, I couldn't agree more. It is about, you know, often there's this hesitation around change. I guess our hand was forced in the last few years to embrace change and to pivot and to be agile, all of those beautiful words that have articulated our experience. (laughs) So I guess, you know, now there's never been a better time to make a change in business or try something new in business than now. What kind of support do brands and retailers have on the back end? So once they're participating in the platform, what is that experience like if they need to speak to a real person or there's some kind of challenge that they're facing that they need to work through? Yeah, so we are a digital first platform, you know, that is our primary method of selling, but we are, we fuse the best of traditional wholesale with this new model. So we have a brands team that's available and in Australia that they can call if they have issues. Each brand is also allocated a brand coordinator who helps them with the administration of the platform because you also recognise that most fashion brands are uh, (laughs) under-resourced, they don't have a lot of people power, so we help provide some of that to them to help support them to actually get the most out of the platform. Um, They can also make appointments with our brand managers who then can help look at, you know, are they releasing product quickly enough? Have they got the right type of product? How's their pricing strategy? Um, How's their imagery? Is it strongest on the platform to actually put their best foot forward? So there are a range of different things that we look at. And then we look at what marketing have we done for them and what was the impact of that marketing? Where can we tweak it as well? So we also take quite a lot of responsibility for that it's a partnership you know there's things on both Mm. sides and I think you know back to kind of what you know what can brands expect I think growth is the biggest thing it's one of our key values and so for us a really good example we had a brand in Queensland and they were really established in Queensland they thought they had that market nailed but they needed help with the rest of the country so they onboarded and in four weeks we secured 96 stores for them Wow. And within six months, they'd secured an additional 52 Queensland stores that they weren't already dealing with that didn't conflict with their existing stores. So the the fact that we give the biggest window into the wholesale market in Australia is definitely one of our biggest strengths and that we uh, respect existing relationships. So if a brand has a stockist in an area, we block that area. No one else can tread on that store's toes because we don't want to create conflict and it is so important in retail that everybody has a unique mix so that's one of the services that we offer to retailers um, to ensure that whenever they're buying with Holler they can buy with confidence knowing their next door neighbor is not going to have the same brand or style and then we also have a team of retailer success managers so they work really closely with their stores to really understand their business Um, and that means that when the store calls they've got buying advice for them they check through on sell through on the last things that they ordered um, and we make sure that you know they continue stocking the best brands that are performing for them that's that sounds like that's something unique when you spoke about you know making sure that you know the store next door is not going to have the same brand or product is Mm. that something unique to your platform we know that happens in a physical environment with wholesale strategy but there's a lot of wholesale platforms popping up, which I want to chat to you about in a moment, like your point of, di- of difference and what is unique about Holla. But is that something unique, making sure that the location is, you know, it, it kind of exclusive, I guess, to that particular business? It is, yes. And we also take into account, you know, our brands, some of them will have existing offline distribution channels. So they may have a showroom in a particular state. We also take into account who they are selling to direct. And that is completely unique. And it's because of our deep understanding of the wholesale industry that we've been able to develop that feature. So that's a real win for our retailers. Wow. And so, Alice, how do the terms differ to a traditional wholesale model? So, again, for anyone out there who's been perhaps wholesaling for many years and they're very used to their, you know, typical indent cycle and maybe they'll sell a little bit of a stock in season, but 
They don't really plan for in stock. That's just kind of a bonus if they have anything le- uh, left over. <laughs> How does this whole model kind of differ? And then what about the terms as well, the costs involved in doing business? Look, the model does differ. I mean, that you don't get pre-order six months in advance. We do have a pre-order function that a lot of our brands use because they may do very small quantities in their first drop to test a style. If it sells out in a day, then they'll reorder it. So we do take pre-orders on that second drop. Um, and some of our brands do everything on a pre-order basis. So they, But the lead times are short. They're not six months, it's four weeks. Um, so you can minimise your risk as a brand by doing that, just ensuring that we do go into production on it. So that is a negotiation with factories to make sure that you have MOQs that are able to be flexible and things like that. Um, in terms of the terms, we try, we've try we made it as closely aligned to traditional wholesale as possible because um, a lot of the platforms, you know, some of them used to be very, very cheap and some of them are very, very expensive. So we have just aligned ourselves in terms uh, very similar to traditional wholesale. So with similar commission rates, um, we cover all of the transaction costs that, you know, obviously transacting online has a cost associated with it. And we take that out of the, the commission rate or take rate that we have with each brand. And we also give them visibility on stockists, which if you were using a distributor is very, very different. So you actually have control over your brand and visibility on where it's being stocked. And then the other thing is uh, cash flow. So if you were using a distributor to do your um, traditional wholesale, that cash flow can be difficult. You know, it can be 60 days till you get paid. And retailers, they love um, they love all the, the creative parts of the role. They love the buying, merchandising, you know, customer service, but paying bills quite often slips to the bottom of the list. And <laughs> so yeah, brands spend a lot of time chasing payment and we get rid of all of that admin. So we pay brands instantly, which means that their cash flow is significantly impacted in a really positive way. Mm. You've just mentioned some very powerful points there around, you know, doing business well. So if someone's kind of tuning in thinking, oh, yeah, I've heard about these platforms and, you know, I've been told that it's really expensive to do business with those platforms, mm-hmm. which is what I hear all the time. What would you say to that, Alice? I would say that, look, some of them are you know, and for the results that you get, they are expensive. For us, we have a different strategy. We we have a select brands that we are bringing on as partners and it will cost them certainly no more than a traditional wholesale model would and it would cost significantly less than doing it themselves um, because we have that window we can scale brands really quickly so we give instant access to thousands of stores where if you were knocking on doors yourself to pay a salesperson to do that is incredibly expensive mm-hmm. plus if you had your own site that you were trying to drive wholesale traffic to that is also really expensive to actually drive that lead generation um, and managing salespeople. You know, it, finding good salespeople is really, really difficult. So we have all of those things in one place for a performance fee, essentially. You know, it's yeah. a, lot, a lot more cost effective. Really dynamic and really powerful. So I, I love the element of the control of your distribution. Mm-hmm. So from a, from a brand perspective, what is the dialogue like? So the brand is still concerned about, okay, which retailers are going to be purchasing from me? How do I control that? What does that mm-hmm. control look like? Yeah, and that's a really interesting question. And a lot of our more premium brands ask that the second they onboard or before they onboard. And what we've found is that stores actually self-select really well. So if you're a premium brand, you really only attract premium stores because they know they can sell the brand. They know their customer vibes with the brand, whereas your more value stores, it's not not a fit for them. So, so far, we've actually never, uh, we've probably cancelled two orders in the whole history of Holler um, that were not a brand fit, where we just knew a store wouldn't sell through on it. The brand wouldn't fit in store properly. Um, so, yeah, we've actually not found that to be an issue. Um, mm. But again, we give visibility so the brand knows where they're stocked. Yeah, that's a pretty good strike rate, two cancellations at that time. So (laughs) there's some confidence instilled there for sure. Um, Before we go into what's happening in the retail landscape, Alice, I'd love just for you to tell us about what you're observing in in the wholesale landscape. So when, you know, as a business on our side, when we look at industry forecasts, you know, there's lots of forecasts around wholesale really slowing down and contracting and, of course, e-commerce growing and expanding purely because, you know, of the um, the retail landscape we are living and working in at the moment. 
you're there at the coal face. You're seeing this every day. I'm I'm sure that you see more opportunities than most people. What's what's your take on the potential growth in the wholesale sector um, in the Australian fashion industry uh, for a start? I think that I think it doesn't matter what the market is like. There are always growth opportunities if you've got your brand right and if you've got your styles right. And so there's been a lot of media doom and gloom, which I think affects the end customer. And I expected grumbling from our retail stores probably over the last six months because there's been so much negative attention on the economy. But to be honest, I've probably only heard things the last couple of weeks after the last interest rate rise. But that's just compounded by the fact it's June. <laughs> June is just a difficult month in retail, um, full stop, or independent retail anyway. But for brands that are doing the right thing, that are generating customer demand and that are building their brand, the growth opportunities are still really, really strong. And are you seeing that in specific categories? So do you see any gaps at the moment? Often I'll talk to, you know, an agency and they're like, we need more knitwear, we need more dresses, <laughs> we need we need more of. Um, what what are you, you seeing that, you know, we need more of at the moment? What's our gap? <laughs> yes. Um, well, for us, it's mature fashion. So mm. we perform really well in young fashion and we have a lot of like yummy mummy kind of apparel yeah but we have a limited mature offering and it's something that our customers ask us for all the time so that's one category that we're going after quite hard at the moment Um, so we've onboarded a few brands for that and part of that is ensuring that they offer a good size curve because mature women in Australia are getting larger we're all getting larger Mm -hmm. Um, so making sure that all of our brands go up to an 18 or 20 is really important for us so that's the kind of category that we're looking for but I think the way the economy is at the moment um, the value brands are going to perform really well over the next 12 months Mm -hmm. so you know like I said our brands mainly retail under 150 so that is an area that we will continue to focus on okay and are you seeing anything that is quite saturated at the moment it's like do you think oh if I see another blah blah brand (laughs) you know I'm just I just I just can't I can't take it anymore so we always know that there are particular categories that are super saturated good to know about the mature age brands because I've got a few in mind that I might be um introducing you to over the next couple of days but yeah anything that's kind of being a bit overdone at the moment Look, we have so many customers, it's pretty rare for us to find something that's overdone. Speed to market is really important with us. If you can be the first brand that releases a split front denim skirt, you're going to be the one to win. Or if you're the first brand to release a printed pantsuit, you're going to be the one to win. But there's still plenty of long tail after for the brands that follow. So being first to market means you get the first bite of the cherry, but there's still plenty left after that. So in terms of saturation, um, I think retailers are probably done with buying coats at this stage. Uh, mm. They're now looking for more trans-seasonal knitwear and things like that. But, yeah, I'd have, we haven't got a trend that we're hating on that we've seen so much of yet. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Good to know, everyone. There's still opportunities for everybody. <laughs> so, Alice, we know that the retail industry is rapidly evolving, especially in areas such as sustainability, circularity, transparency, technology, AI, the metaverse. It's all coming at us. How is Hollart responding to these types of shifts in the industry? Yeah, ethical is a growing category for us. Um, We have uh, Series Life which is exclusively available on Holla, and that is an incredible ethical and sustainable brand. They use a lot of recycled fabrics and fibres and rescue fabrics and things like that, which um, buyers are responding to incredibly well. What we are finding is that end customers care so much about this, but buyers have been a little slower to follow. So it's a bit of a slower burn in wholesale is the the ethical and sustainable piece, but it's something that we're really focused on growing. So in terms of categories that we're growing, that's another one. If somebody has that full transparency into their supply chain, um, you know, some of the brands we're talking to at the moment have transparency right down to where their fibres were grown, the farm that they were grown on in Australia. So mm-hmm. that kind of story is incredible incredibly powerful for the end customer and it's an education piece to I guess get retailers across it to understand how important that is to their customer base so that's an area we're focusing on um, that sustainability and transparency Um, in terms of tech trends I'm all about this (laughs) 
AI is probably not really a trend anymore. It's more of a business essential. So we have built it in from the very base up in our new platform, which launches next month, so that every retailer has a unique experience of Holler that is tailored to their business. Um, and that is all powered by AI, which is really exciting and will mean that, um, you know, the buying journey is more efficient, but also more joyful because they find the styles that they need quicker. Um, and for brands, that is amazing because it means that the conversion rate um, increases and is faster for them. So they're getting their sales more quickly. Um, and we're also looking into AI for things like our business efficiencies and data analysis as well. So that um, that is a, a, a thing, not just a trend. That's a thing. It's the a metaverse, natural thing. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, the metaverse, look, we keep an eye on it, but it's not really our customer yet. Um, so, and you have to be discerning about where you spend your, your time, energy and budget. So mm. anything that is outside of our core business, we keep an eye on, but we don't invest in it. Uh, if money was no object, Alice, we'd be going into the metaverse right now <laughs> and we'd be landing in the Holla showroom and that then we'd be right. going, we'd have our headset on, we'd be going from brand Feeling to brand. Feeling the fabrics. <laughs> uh, it, would be, it would be amazing. So, yeah, yeah of, of course, you know, everything's evolving in that space and it is going to be a game changer in certain areas of the industry, but it's about adopting that technology at the right time for your business, isn't it? But yeah. so good to hear about the AI component. Can I just ask, how did you educate yourself in the tech space? So coming from your industry background, have you got someone behind the scenes there that's a, you know, a technology guru that's assisting you to iterate when it comes to AI and all of the technical dynamics of the biz? Look, we do have a big technical team now, so that is a big part of our business. Um, I do lead it still. I find it fascinating and it's probably... The, the thing I've loved most about Holla um, is learning the technical side of things and really digging deep into it. Um, so, look, Holla was not easy to build. When I first started out, I, it, was, <laughs> it was not great, but I learned a lot very, very quickly and found the right technical resources to actually help us. So our team is amazing now, and we do have teams all over the place specialising in different parts of the site. So, mm. yeah, we I, I lean on other people's expertise to execute, but I guess um, I own the vision for it and what we need for our customers so I try and stay as connected with our customers as I possibly can so that you know I know what their pains are what they love about the site you know even down to you know what they're selling in store and what they're not selling so that we can make sure we're optimizing Holla for the best experience for them. Yeah I absolutely love it because I'm sure when you're breaking new ground there's always challenges and that's what it's all about it's overcoming them but having the right team around you as well that's kind of where the magic happens. So I just wanted to chat about the future of retail. Again, you're there, you're at the forefront. So what strategies, Alice, do you recommend that brands and retailers embrace and implement um, to effectively prepare to embrace the future of fashion? I've got three things and they apply to both sides. They're not, um, they're not necessarily new things, but they are foundational pieces that need to be nailed if you know, if the brand is to grow or the business is to grow. Yeah. So one is actually investing in branding. Mm -hmm. So lead gen is cheap and easy on things like Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. Um, but what is not easy is actually creating a brand that people remember and know and creating those fans. So if you're a fashion label, creating a brand that people follow and have a feeling about is really important because it actually helps the wholesale sell through so that they go into that independent retailer, they see your brand on the shelf and they go, I know that one, I'm going to try it on and take it home. Um, and that just creates your whole brand circle. So investing in branding is number one. And the good thing about Holler is it does free up brands time to actually work on brand building so that the entire wholesale piece is handled. They don't have to worry about invoicing or any of those things. So it just frees up time for them to work on it. The other is knowing data. So really understanding the numbers of the business, trade cycles, customers and sell through on, on styles and, you know, which styles perform and which don't and really digging into why that is so that you can create the best possible ranges moving forward at the right times. That really is critical, especially in our market where things are moving quite quickly is, you know, being that first person to market with the denim split front skirt, it's important. And knowing that your customers, what length they want it and what colour in they want it, things like that. And then the last one is stock management. So 
in a more, you know, we've had incredible growth over the last three years and now it's really starting to tail off. So in that kind of environment, just being really lean on stock holdings and that's both in a retail sense but also in a brand sense as well so um so that you're not wearing the cost of holding that stock and then being really nimble on reordering so if something does sell out get it back in asap yeah love it so the branding the data and analytics the stock management make sure you are back in stock as soon as possible they're yeah. great they're absolutely great tips um, Alice, I'm just going to ask you again, I know we covered this about the resistance to embracing change. I just feel, because we're getting towards the end of the conversation, I just want to really want to kind of, you know, land this one and make sure mm-hmm. that our listeners um, are inquisitive about your platform and, you know, this is a fairly new model. Mm-hmm. So for anyone who's kind of sitting there thinking, mm, again, don't think this is for me, um, what if some of the, you know, the profound uptakes in business or growth in business you mentioned one earlier about the increase in stockers and sales are there any other you know observations that you've made I'm sure there's many probably every day of the week but anything you'd like to share with us that might just kind of change someone's mind who's sitting on the fence at the moment um, I, th- I think use case is always the best example isn't it? so giving brand examples so Brands that have really strong imagery, that have regular product updates, so they're releasing ranges regularly and reliably as well, that they have a a certain rhythm to them. Those are the kind of brands that perform really well on Holla. Um, And often they will secure five, 600 stores with us who then reorder. And our month-on-month retention rate is insanely high. Our overall retention rate is 90%. So 90% of retailers who place an order with us will come back in place. And month-on-month, I think it's around 70%. So most of our retailers are buying with us every single month and reordering on brands. Um, So I think the the data really is, you know, the, the key to it. It's understanding how our customers buy and then being able to deliver that as a brand. Mm, I'm sure some ears kind of pricked up then when you said, let's add a few hundred stockers to your portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might get a few people over the line. Um, yeah. Alice, tell us a little bit about you. What's a day in the life of your role like? I see you showing up everywhere. You're in my Insta feed, <laughs> you're on my LinkedIn feed. I think you've done an event with a retailer the other week. You are showing up everywhere. No doubt that takes a lot of resilience and tenacity. Hey, what's a day in the life of um, your role like? Um, well, Wednesday is content day. So <laughs> I have been making content for our brands and for the business. Um, we're also on Wednesdays. I tend to work on more creative things. So whether that's talk to you or organising something like the promotion that we just did with Bird's Nest, where we sent one of our lucky retailers down to spend time with the founder of Bird's Nest. Um, so we love to do things like that, whether it's um, you know doing a webinar for social media to help our stores really grow their skills in that area. So I always have one day that is like creative and that I love. Love because it lets me kind of be free and wild with my imagination. The rest of the week is definitely more focused around teams. So whether that's working with our tech team on feature development, user acceptance testing, scoping out new features, um, or working with our retailer success team to really nail down what our stores are selling through on at the moment. Um, you know, what are the challenges in their business that we can help them address? And then obviously translating that through to our marketing team so that we can give the right messages to our customers at the right times. And then I don't have a huge hand in admin, but we obviously have an admin team who keep the back end of Holla running smoothly and make sure that every single order by every single brand is shipped out on time. <laughs> And then I do spend quite a lot of time still talking with brands um, because our brand onboarding is pretty much automated. It's very quick. It takes about 24 hours. I get it, it has freed up my time to actually speak with brands and, you know, help them to optimize their, their visibility on Holla and, you know, work on future ranges and things like that. Sounds like a lot of fun, but a lot of hard work. What's, yeah. <laughs> um, what's your favorite part of the role? Uh, look, it's fashion, right? So new ranges are like the gift that you get every single day. So that's always really fun. Um, and I just love it seeing when a brand nails it, when they've just 
they've identified what their customers want and they deliver it at just the right time. That is just magic when that happens. Um, my other favourite thing is probably hearing from our retailers especially the ones who were indenting and how they switched their business model and their business is just so much more enjoyable for them. Mm. That really lights up my soul and them telling us how much they love Holla. So I get a couple of those phone calls every week, which is just lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's really satisfying, isn't it? When you just see, yeah. see that the results are landing on the other end, that vision that you had is actually coming you know, to fruition. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Sounds like a, a very um, dynamic role that you have, Alice. So finally, in closing, we would love for you to share what excites you most about the future of wholesale and retail? It's probably something that's already starting to happen, but that truly immersive and personalised experience. So but for retailers in a technical sense, so online retailers being able to deliver the right styles to their customers at the right times and creating a more immersive experience where it's omni-channel and it's reaching their customer in a load of different ways, or if they're bricks and mortar, actually delivering really exciting human touch, high value experiences. I think that is really exciting. And then we touched on it before, but I would love to have a, an AR thing where people can touch the fabrics on Holler. I just think that would be insane. <laughs> I think it would be insane. We can certainly do drape of fabric and the whole 3D and there's so many different things, but no doubt we're going to get there. It's um, I don't think it's too far away at all. Um, Alice, congratulations on your amazing business, your success in a very short period of time. What an amazing opportunity for brands and retailers out there. We can't wait to see how your business continues to grow and evolve. Thank you so much for being so generous with your time and your knowledge today. Thanks so much, Elizabeth, for having me. Thank you so much for listening to the Fashion Business Mindset Podcast. We'd love to keep connected. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Fashion Equipped. And if you'd like to find out more about our Start Your Fashion Business program and your mentor collective, head to our website, fashionequipped.com.au. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share this podcast with others. Hit subscribe, leave us a rating and review. Let's do this together. Let's make the fashion business your business. This is a Guide Your Light Network production, creating podcasts with purpose.